Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Harmony Insights lunch date. My name is Eric Kershaw. I'm the owner of Harmony Insights LLC, a company that allows me to work with organizations and consultants using the DISC personality assessment. Much of that is happening online these days, as you can imagine, from the assessment all the way through to the workshops where we're bringing teams together to talk about how they connect with one another and their respective audiences in the workplace by better understanding their own communication style as well as uh, what other people need from them and how they can adapt to connect more effectively. So I get all kinds of excited about DISC and you can find out more about that at harmonyinsights.com. I'm also the founder of the HR Hot Seat Inclusive Mastermind Community. We have a whole bunch of members in 10 different licensed chapters around the country. And we come together entirely for free and all virtual these days to share resources and, and inspiration and, and connect um, really meaningfully with each other. Today, you have joined us for a lunch date. And I started doing these a number of months ago, actually April it was, to remain connected with people who truly inspire me. And today's um, guest, special guest, uh, Lotus Buckner certainly makes that short list. So Lotus, I want to welcome you to today's Harmony Insights Lunch Date. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. That's a great start. <laughs> Lotus, you and I met each other more recently and had a fantastic conversation. At the end of that conversation, I said, Lotus, you have to come back for a lunch date. And you were happy to do so. And I said, you know, I choose my guests and my guests choose our topics. And I asked you what you wanted to talk about. And you have entitled our conversation today, finding the courage to stand out in a world that wants you to fit in. As the CEO and founder of LB Talent Solutions, as an HR practitioner yourself, as a career coach, you know, what is it about this particular topic that inspires you and, and that you're passionate about? Yeah, so what inspires me about this is that I work with so many people in all three of my worlds. I kind of think of my world as my um, HR professional world, my full-time job, um, my side job as a career coach, and then diversity and inclusion, which is kind of my passion project. In all three of those worlds, the common theme has always been when I talk to people is, how do I actually stand out? There's just so much noise and a lot of competition and I feel like I just get lost in that. And so what inspires me about this topic is really helping people be able to navigate all of that noise and really find their spot. Well, you're not the only one that's inspired by this topic. Just Tuesday of this week, I spoke with Wendy Daly of the HR Social Hour Half Hour podcast and, and Twitter chat. And she titled her conversation, Shouting into the Wind, Finding Your Voice in a World of Noise. So there's something about this week, you know, where this topic continues to come up. And she shared some fantastic tips. We won't go into those now. Maybe I'll bring them up along the way as, as you make some of them as well. I'm assuming there's going to be some overlap here. But you're going to be bringing a different perspective. You know, Wendy is a talent acquisition professional. She's a, a blogger and a podcaster. And you've talked about some of the things that you do that are a little bit different. And I'm really excited about the perspective you're going to bring. Before we continue, I want to launch a quick poll. You know, we're talking about finding our voice, but part of finding our voice is also then articulating that voice in some way. And I think there's a lot wrapped up into that. And so I've put together a quick poll for attendees that says, of the following, what do you find most challenging? And it's multiple choice. You can select all that apply. Knowing yourself, being vulnerable, articulating your value, making meaningful connection, or remembering to unmute yourself when you are speaking. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like it may have cut off some of that question for me, but when you were speaking on Zoom, which is always a challenge for me. So um, as people are responding to that, t tell me a little bit more about the challenges that you feel our audience, which by the way, is probably a good mix of HR professionals, folks in job transition, leaders at all levels of the company. What are the set, some of the challenges that you see people being faced these days specifically related to finding their voice? Sure. Well, first of all, I was at Wendy's session. So I have to say she's my kindred spirit. So that's why we chose similar topics. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. <laughs> um, loved her session. And 
I think some of the challenges that people face, one of them is competition, right? So not only when you're looking for a job, but a promotion when you're within a company and you're kind of working really hard to figure out how you stand out when it comes to performance review time, right? There's just so many reasons when it comes to work. So I think that's a challenge um, for people is competition. And then there's, like I said, there's just a lot of noise, right? So there's so much advice that people are giving you and how do you really navigate that? And then I think the third one is just the pressure to fit in in society, right? We set strict criteria for when we hire for jobs. We set really strict codes of conduct of how you must behave this way, right? That's a big thing we're talking about in the diversity and inclusion world is that really inclusive. Um, we get judged a lot in society by the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we walk. Um, so I think there's also that societal pressure that people face. So I'd say those are kind of the three challenges that I hear a lot about. And I think wrapped up in this conversation, and correct me if, if you disagree for any reason, but you know, we're, we are struggling to find our voices both personally and professionally right? That there's who we are when we go into the office or we turn on Zoom for, for professional reasons. But, you know, there's the, the time that we spend, for example, on social media, uh, in our personal accounts, and maybe just even among our friends. And um, I think getting a sense that we're surrounded by people who have very, um, what we perceive as to be very valuable contributions and very well thought through perspectives on things. And then so we're kind of sitting here then saying, well, what, what do I have to add to this conversation as we're talking about race relations, you know, like, do I have something to say, you know, and, and if I do, how do I then articulate that? Um, and I think there's an authenticity piece, right? To that is how do I do? How do I do that authentically, where I don't constantly feel like, I'm having to try and say or do what other people expect me to, right? Like <laughs> even in a job interview, like we go in often thinking, um, thinking about what the other person wants us to respond with. Yeah, so, this, so you mentioned kind of a buzzword and I, I personally like the word authentic. You know, I say genuine, sincere, authentic. I use them all very interchangeably. I've seen a lot of people kind of push back about, push back against, this, this sense of authenticity or this conversation around that. Have you seen that too? Do you feel that people for some reason have an aversion to this conversation about bringing our authentic selves to our relationships? I, find, I, I just had this conversation on Twitter. Oh, yeah. um, I think that people have an aversion to any word that becomes a buzzword. <laughs> right. And they just are like sick of hearing it. Um, yeah. But you know, what I mean by that is exactly what you're saying. I mean, I think you have to be able to bring your whole self to work, bring your whole self wherever you go. Um, yeah. And that, that's a personal opinion, but I think that's a lot of what we're talking about, especially right now when we're talking about inclusion, because for so long people didn't feel like they could bring their whole selves, especially to work, but even sometimes to their social circles. Yeah. I want to share the, the, the poll, the results of the poll that we took. 15% uh, say knowing themselves is the greatest challenge, you know, being introspective. 15% say being vulnerable. And Brene Brown has a lot to say about being vulnerable. If you haven't checked out Br Brene Brown, I'd highly recommend her stuff. Articulating your value. Look at that, 65%. So we're going to come back to that. 10% say making meaningful connections with other people, and then 25% say remembering to unmute themselves when they're speaking on Zoom. Let's come back to this. Is there anything in what you see there that surprises you, Lotus? I don't think any, uh, maybe the muting. That's, that's a fairly large percentage. <laughs> I'm guilty of it myself. I <laughs> um, and I think articulating is a challenge. Um, I talk to a lot of people about that piece is, um, storytelling, right? But that can get challenged to really figure out how to tell your story. And it's not because you don't know your values or, you know, who you really are, but to articulate that in different situations. Eric, I think you actually talk about this a lot where um, I think I heard you say once that you kind of have your story or your pitch depending on what situation or environment that you're in. And I think that's really important. And I think people do struggle not just with 
how to articulate their value, but how do you articulate that value in different situations too? Which becomes such a popular or common conversation with folks who are in job transition because um, I've done some career coaching as you do. And one of the first questions I say or ask is, what value do you bring to a potential employer? And we usually could spend, you know, weeks on that question alone because it requires you to do some introspection, be clear on what your value is, but then there's that piece of our actually articulating it, you know, and doing it in a succinct way and in a, in a compelling way. I mean, I've had my own small business around DISC for years now, and I still struggle with, I'm very clear internally on what the value of DISC is. I still struggle articulating that value or my value as a, as a facilitator to potential clients. And every time I stumble over my words, I'm thinking, Eric, you've been doing this for long enough. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it should be so tricky. And when we're out there on the job search, you know, we're expected to be clear on what our value is and then be able to articulate that in some compelling way. And as we're seeing here in the poll, it's just not that easily done. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a huge, um, challenge because words are tricky, right? We just talked about the word authentic and why people have such an aversion to it. Um, you're going to, no matter what words you choose and no matter how you tell your story, I think at some point we have to remember that we're not going to make everyone happy either and that we're not going to um, relate to 100% of people that we're talking to. Because I think sometimes that's a mistake we make too is that that want and that um, urge to make everyone happy and find the perfect words um, to say. Again, I'm talking about, obviously I'm passionate about diversity and inclusion. We're talking a lot about that in that space as well, about how you don't need to know the perfect thing to say. And yeah. sometimes our nature is that we want to try and find the perfect way to say it before we're willing to say it. Wendy has chimed in here in the chat. She said, it can be hard to know how to adjust your message to be able to reach the different audiences using the right language. And it's so funny, you may appreciate this Lotus. And I think other people who are joining us as well, so much of our conversation often comes back to things like communication. You just mentioned diversity and inclusion, mindfulness, authenticity. Who knows what any of those words mean? <laughs> you know, like we could take a poll here. We could have people define in the chat what any of these words mean. And we would come up with so many different perspectives. So then how can we even begin to talk about this stuff meaningfully, you know, without having this common language? Let's, before we leave this articulating your value, I know you spend a lot of time with folks who are in job transition. What are the, some, some of the, and I'm throwing you curveballs here, but what are some of the recommendations, some of the tips and strategies that you share specifically with job seekers who struggle with articulating their value? Yeah, so I, I take people through a series of exercises, but one of the first things I tell everyone to do is forget about the job. Like I know we're talking about how to get you a job, but forget about the job. <laughs> Let's talk about you first, because we have a natural default to put a career lens on everything we do. And I try to encourage people to take that lens off and actually use a personal lens. Your, see your career through your personal lens. So the first exercise that I think everyone should do is self-reflect really deeply and come up with your personal mission statement. If you don't have a personal mission statement, I think it is an amazing place to start is to develop one. And it takes a lot of being honest with yourself um, and lots and lots of real, true, authentic um, self-reflection. Whatever that means, right? <laughs> authentic. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> we'll figure that out along but the way. What's important to you, right? Just yeah. Determine, think about besides a job, what are the things that you value most? What's important to you that you are not willing to give up for any amount of money, right? Yeah. Is that your integrity? Is that your ethics? Is that your family? Um, so I think understanding what's really true and important to you is an important first step. And then Stephen, Stephen Covey talks a lot about mission statements. So if people have not read St Stephen Covey, I highly recommend, and I don't know in particular what book or, you know, audio book um, he talks about this, but I remember along the way, um, really listening to, he's talking about within an organization, every level of the organization up to the service desk, you know, the front desk of a hotel, that, that desk itself could have its own mission statement, you yeah. know, that, that fits in in the lines in some way with the organization. And it sounds like you're saying that, that being clear on your own mission statement really connects you with your 
values in a way that will benefit you not only as a candidate for a job and an eventually employee of that job, but really maybe any style of work that you do. And I would hazard a guess, even in your personal relationships with people. Yes, that's a really good point too, because I think we forget about that. Again, <laughs> default to a career lens and everything's about work. <laughs> but you're right, I think that would really help um, in building upon the relationships we currently have and also how you network, right? And how you make new connections. I don't, uh, I'm not going to go off on this tangent, but given the work that I do around DISC and introspection, you know, and the career coaching, and you may have seen this too. I've seen so many people jump into the job search before they first know themselves, before they're very first clear on what those values happen to be. And I've seen people jump into relationships, you know, uh, for lifelong partnership before yeah. they're clear on the values that they bring. You know, you sit down, can you imagine to, to a first date and someone says, tell me about yourself. And you sit there sort of silent, looking around for the answer, you know, same with a, an interview, maybe for a job, you know, what do you value? That's, that's a, that's a pretty tough question to answer. If you haven't put in that thought in advance, it sounds like you might be able to, or you might stumble upon stumble through funny how I'm stumbling saying that. <laughs> articulating yeah. that to somebody else. I actually am looking at the chat and Julie just um, wrote about knowing who you are is key to understanding your why. And I don't know if anyone has read Simon Sinek's book, um, but he talks about your why a lot and how important that is. And you know, you should really think about that as you develop your mission statement. It's not just about what's important to you and what you bring to the table, but why? Yeah. Why are those things important? Because it's really about digging deep. And so I think that's really important. Um, but just the first step, I think that's the second step. Um, the other exercise I like to give people to do is after you have your mission statement, your brand statement, and the difference is your brand is actually what do you offer then. And so mission will help you determine what makes you unique and what can you offer that's unique. So the mission is your values. Um, and those are probably pretty philosophical at times, you know, maybe harder to quantify and to articulate. And then your brand is then, how are you going to demonstrate those values for an organization? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And how, and how you differentiate yourself. So that's the piece that people use really end up struggling with um, when it comes to articulating their value. That's how you're actually saying, I help X. And the, this is a formula that I, I just love is I help blank do blank. So who's your audience? Who are you helping, right? If you're looking for a job, you can say, I, I can help your organization do X, Y, Z. And that's how you differentiate yourself. Yeah. Um, that's great. It's, it's funny. That's um, very similar. So when I'm talking on professional networking and value statements, I start with that as well. And then for people who want to dig in a little bit more deeply, I help who to do what by you know, sort of what is your method? How do you help them do it? And then if you really, you know, jumping into this, to what end, you know, so that they can do what? I help who to do what by fill in the blank so that they can. And then if you have even those first two, like you mentioned, that's you're well on your way to being able to articulate the, your brand statement or the value you're going to bring to an organization. I think the formula, the simplicity of it actually yeah. helps you stay succinct too. Yeah, um, yeah. Because otherwise you could go on and on, right? Just if someone asks you like, tell me about you, you could go on for yeah. days. That's a formula that you can use to really um, stick to a strong, simple story of how you stand out. I love it. I help who be clear on your audience to do what? And then that's, that's a great starting point for any conversation. Can we talk about vulnerability for a moment? Because I feel like that's wrapped up in all of this. And it, it often comes up in these conversations when we're talking about how we connect meaningfully with one another. How have you, let's step away from the people that if you don't mind being vulnerable yourself, let's step away from the people you've coached. One of the things that I love about you is that you, you are a practitioner, you know, you are helping folks, you know, you have your, your side hustle, we'll call it, but you're a practitioner yourself. How have you, Lotus, um, chosen to be vulnerable in the work that you do as a practitioner with your teams and your, and the, your supervisors and the people who are peers to you? Yeah, I think being vulnerable um, for me has been about 
one, admitting when I'm wrong and being okay with being wrong and not having all of the answers. Because I think that's hard as a leader when you lead teams is you feel like you need to have all the answers for them. But that's one thing I've learned is that I really have to be, be true to that um, because, and show that I'm also human. Just because I'm leading teams, it doesn't mean that I'm not human myself. So that's a big one. And then the other one is sharing my story. I, I have found that that has been way more powerful than I ever could have imagined. Um, and a, a short example just happened this week. I was sitting with our newly formed Diversity and Inclusion Council, and the room was quiet, and no one really wanted to share um, their story, their introduction, really kind of their name and their title. And we asked for stories, and no one really wanted to share. And I, I just said, well, maybe it'll help if I go ahead and I share my story and why this is important to me. And I actually ended up didn't plan this way, but I ended up choking up. And I was, oh. uh, I was cheering up a little bit telling um, that story that I, I don't tell very often. Um, and then the meeting kind of blew up from there. And everybody yeah. started opening up and we really got to know each other a lot better. And we learned each other's values. We learned how to communicate with each other. We learned how to, where um, their values are that they can contribute to the group. So it was very powerful. I think storytelling is huge. One of the things I'm taking from that story, which is a great story, is sometimes maybe, and tell me if you agree, sometimes we find our voice by following someone else's lead, um, by understanding that either we have permission, you know, and we are encouraged, or we don't need permission you know, that, that our story is valuable in and of itself. And you weren't, you didn't, no one gave you explicit permission, but you offered that. And by you offering that, then it was sort of, sort of, um, you know, people, other people were inspired to tell theirs. So it's sort of following the examples that other people are setting and realizing you don't really need explicit permission to tell your story to begin with. Exactly. I think also it doesn't just give you permission in that room or in that space to then also share your story. But I think every time that happens, it gives you more permission to be the one who speaks up first next time. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that, um, that Wendy mentioned on Tuesday. One of her points was just, just start, you know, decide, you know, once you've get, gotten to the point that you know what you want to say and how you want to say it, or maybe you haven't even gotten that far, but, you know, start somewhere, wherever you are in your journey, because other people are earlier on in theirs, farther ahead, less confident than you, more confident than you. You know, I, actually, this makes me think of a quote I'm familiar with. And, and I've thought about this as I've started various things that I've done over time. Never compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. Yeah, and it's I so it. It's so easy to look around and say, oh, this person seems to have the job search all figured out. Or this person is, is blogging or podcasting in ways that I could never do but they've been doing it longer, <laughs> right? You have to start somewhere. And I think that that can be applied to identifying and, and articulating your own story and finding your voice, right? It's, it's a spectrum in a journey. <laughs> what that makes me think of is when I was younger, when I was a teenager and like, I used to complain to my mom about my boyfriend and she'd be like, you, d you think everyone has this perfect relationship and you just don't know what anyone's going through. <laughs> and it's so true. Like, you know, we always can pick apart ourselves or our own situation. And it's easy to look externally into someone else's life and think that it, they've got it all together. And like, why, you know, what did I do to deserve what I'm going through? But right. I'm going through. But mom, look at Facebook. Everybody has the perfect right. life. I'm the You're only wrong. one who's. <laughs> I'm seeing like, in chat. You post your sadness all over. <laughs> I'm seeing on chat people are chiming in from Barbados, from Finland. So we have we have some people. Texas, I saw in the mix. I really appreciate that people are coming from far and wide for these conversations. Lotus, we're coming up on the final few minutes of our conversation. What is one tip? If you were to share one tip that people who are looking to make immediate progress in this area, to, to find their voice, to be able to articulate their story. What is one of your, your, your biggest tips that you can share with people? My biggest tip is to write your own story and, you know, so that you can 
begin. You have that introduction to tell your story and write it with your voice. Don't write it. Don't Google what other people's stories are, how they introduce themselves. Do it um, with a lot of self-reflection. I really think self-reflection is the first piece, and that just means really thinking about all what's important to you, how you stand out, what makes you special. Um, and if you do that, I think you can come up a, with a really great story um, to tell and articulate about yourself. Write your own story. I love it. That is a fantastic tip to leave on. Lotus, people are going to want to follow up with you for all kinds of reasons, I'm sure. Where, what's the best place for people to find you online? The best place is probably my website. It's lotusbuckner.com. And it has all of my, I'm on all social media. So instead of listing them all, you can go there and you can find all of them. Excellent. Easy enough. Um, I'm going to follow up via email with everybody who registered for today. We had over 50 people who registered, which I was, I was absolutely thrilled with. And we're, I'm going to send some of the uh, links to some of the resources that we mentioned, maybe some things that weren't mentioned. Uh, Lotus is going to send me some additional um, links that she'd like me to share, and I will get that out to everybody. In the meantime, if you were as inspired by this conversation as I was, I hope you'll go back to harmonyinsights.com slash lunch dates. We have uh, a few coming up over the course of the next few weeks that I am just absolutely thrilled about. Pretty soon we're going to be talking with um, Brendan Nichols, the president of HRA of Greater Oak Brook, on uh, the topic of creating a growth mindset, which will be a great conversation. Um, Terry Bean, if you don't know that name, uh, net, the network is everything, something along those lines. Um, that is going to be just a fantastic discussion. Karen Allen is coming up soon. Terry Bean, I think, founded a local um, presence of TEDx, and Karen Allen was a TEDx speaker as well, I think, in Orlando. She and I are going to be talking um, about uh, mental resilience and mental strength. Her story is phenomenal. If you've not looked up Karen Allen's TEDx talk, you're going to want to do that. She tells just an amazing story, and I hope you all come back for that, plus uh, a few others that I've recently thrown in the mix, including one specific to disc practitioners. If you are a disc practitioner in your organization, we're going to get together and swap best practices for virtual facilitation. So I'm really excited about that on September 18th. Um, this has been a fantastic conversation, Lotus. If people need to leave now, it is 1230. You can go about your afternoon with our blessing and we're, we hope you leave inspired to do or pursue your best work. That's the goal of these lunch dates. And uh, in the meantime, if you wanna stick around, this is a chance for you to, to contribute by unmuting yourself and, and offering a contribution or a question. But in the meantime, Lotus, again, I've been so eager to have you on and you've done such a fantastic job of helping us spread the word. Uh, about these lunch dates. And I, I really thank you for spending this time with us. Oh, I'm so happy to.